Hey, I'm Dr. Robert Roman. Today we're talking about the inspiring type. That tends to be my own particular strongest trait, and we're going to be sharing that with you. And I want you to be able to understand this information and learn a little bit more about me. But hey, you know what? Enough talking about me. Let's talk about you. How do you like me? I guess you understand. That's the inspiring type. They tend to turn things in their direction. Welcome to Becoming Wiser with Dr. Robert A. Rome, author and world-renowned public speaker as he shares stories involving his experiences and lessons learned in a good-spirited, positive, and fun way. Here's Dr. Robert A. Rome. Today we're going to be talking about the inspiring type. The primary need of the inspiring type is recognition. If you just give them a little bit of recognition and let them know that you're thinking about them or you care about them because they're all about fun. If they were an animal, sometimes we like to just identify things to help us understand. They'd be like a fun-loving otter. If you've ever been to a circus or been to the fair and you've seen the otters swimming around, they'll just jump out of the water. They'll clap. They do everything they can to let you notice them. If they were a, a substance, I believe they would be confetti. You know when confetti is thrown up? at the parade, or when it comes down at the end of the Super Bowl, the World Series, the ticker tape parade, all of that is about fun and excitement. Let's focus on the inspiring types. I'm give you some words. You can jot these down if you'd like to, or you can just listen. All of these will begin, if you'll notice, with the letter I. They're inspiring, influencing, inducing, bring it on, make it happen. They're very impressive. This is the personality is very interesting. I've jokingly said they seem to have all their marbles, but their shooters missing at times. They're very impressionable. They love to be important, and they're so interchangeable. They're interested in people. They're imaginative and very impulsive. They tend to think after they do. They have to learn to think carefully before you jump into situations with all feet. If it's a good idea, if you're going to jump out of an airplane, to make sure you have a parachute before you get to the door. The one area that sometimes they find themselves in a little bit of trouble, here's the one word, not to be negative, but they've got to recognize they can be illogical. The hardest trait for this particular personality is to think things through. Why is that? Because they're always in the moment, but unfortunately, that's the only moment where they are. They have a hard time thinking two weeks, three weeks, six weeks, six months from now. They are in the moment more than any of the other personality styles. Usually there's about 25 to 30% in the general population who, who, who have this style, and they go into the field most of the time of some kind of, whether it's entertainment or, uh, or uh, being the star of the show, the spokesperson, a salesperson, uh, someone that can interact with people. They just could sell an anchor to a drowning man. But as I mentioned in show business, you have so many, you know, Jim Carrey, uh, Will Smith, Oprah Winfrey, Ellen DeGeneres. There's just no end to all of the people who are funny, happy, excited. Why is that? Because their basic need is recognition, approval, and popularity. All you have to do is say, hey, Sparky, where'd you get those shoes? Man, those are good looking shoes. Where'd you get that shirt? Man, it makes you just look so good. You won them because you gave them, there's the word, recognition. Now, this particular personality style has certain strengths. Let's talk about them. They're very friendly, compassionate, carefree, and talkative. They tend to be more outgoing and enthusiastic. They're warm, personable, and fun. This is the one who's the star of the show, fun and excitement. They like to make sure that everybody's getting along with each other, and that's to them, if they have, they don't have to really go to a party, they are the party. They carry the party with them everywhere they go. You remember this was the one in school that was sometimes known as the class clown or the one that would raise their hand and answer a question and then say, well, I'm not sure I know the answer. Could you give me a hint? And the teacher would think, how could you have raised your hand that you wanted to answer the question and you didn't even know the answer? See, the teacher may have said, who discovered America? But what they heard was, anybody want to talk? And man, their hand went up real quickly because they saw the opportunity. 
Now, listen carefully. We've got to be fair when we talk about these particular types. Under control, this particular personality is very optimistic. But when they get out of control, they can look unrealistic. Under control, they can be very persuasive. But out of control, they can become manipulative. Under control, they're excited. Out of control, that can lead to being emotional. Under control, they're very communicative or talkative. But out of control, that can lead to becoming a gossip. Under control, they're spontaneous. Let's just have fun. Let's take off. Out of control, that can be impulsive and end up getting yourself in a lot of trouble. Under control, they're very outgoing. But out of control, that can become unfocused. Mm, I wish I had known this growing up. I was the president of the student body, the captain of the team, the leader of this, the president of that, because I was so outgoing. I didn't even know what the word unfocused meant, but I was the model of it, not knowing, do I have my homework? Do I have the right book? I don't even know what we're talking about right now. I'm just lost. That would have really helped me to understand how to help myself and work with me better. They're very expressive under control, but out of control, they can be excitable. Under control, they, they're so involved. Sign me up, count me in. That's why they're involved in clubs, sports, or extracurricular activities. But out of control, they can become directionless and not ever get anything done because they're great starters. But they're terrible finishers because the pizzazz, the SOS, the shiny object syndrome, once that wears off, well, they lose focus on that. They're very imaginative have great imaginations, but unfortunately that can lead to daydreaming. If they're reading a story, they actually become the lead role or the star in a movie or in a book or anything that they're watching. They tend to have an identification with the hero or the shero in the movie, whether it's male or female. They are very warm and friendly under control, but out of control, they can come across as purposeless because they lose direction. Now, these are some of the areas that they are good at. Now, listen carefully. I believe you can become anything in life you want to be if you're willing to go to school, get a mentor, study it, work at it, develop it. I believe that you have incredible gifts and talents. However, I also believe there's some things you would be better at doing than others. And this, listen to this list. Are you ready? They make great actors or airline attendants, or auctioneers, broadcasters, clowns, coaches, comedians, entertainers, evangelists, master of ceremonies, meeting planners, Peace Corps volunteers. They make great performers. They're excellent politicians. Wouldn't that make sense that they're big talkers? Politicians, preachers, public relation directors, public speakers. Almost every motivational speaker I've ever worked with had a lot of this trait in their personality style, radio personalities, receptionists, reporters, salespeople, teachers, telemarketers, telephone operators, travel agents, and wedding consultants. You know, they just make great people to know. We're not trying to say that's the only personality style that can do those particular vocations, but it does help you to see the kinds of things they're attracted to. The the, the kinds of professions that they would enjoy. All my life growing up, I wanted to be a dentist. Do you know who talked me out of it? My dentist. He knew me well enough to know being trapped in an office, working all day long, doing the same thing was not how I was wired. I was only 17 at the time. I'm grateful for my dentist telling me this isn't something you want to do. You see, I was not looking at it primarily from what I would enjoy. I was looking at it because I saw the kind of person he was. He had a big house, a beautiful wife, three kids, a swimming pool in his backyard, a 1956 white Thunderbird with a tire on the back, and zoysia grass in his yard. Every time I went over to uh, over to his house, I'd just take my shoes off and walk in the grass. It was like carpet. It took me forever to even learn how to say the word zoysia grass. So understanding this is what I might think I want to do and understanding what I really would be good at are two different things. I types like exposure to people, lots of activity and making people laugh. They are excellent at short-term projects. They like to be on the go and they love prestige. I types enjoy making people happy. As I mentioned earlier, 
And I think it's so funny, and I, just to repeat it, I said, hey, I'm Dr. Robert Rome. How you like me so far? Well, enough talking about me. Let's talk about you. How do you like me? You see, it kind of keeps coming back to them. And again, I'm not saying that in a derogatory manner. I'm not saying that they're self-centered. I'm just saying they like themselves. They have a great personality because they have a strong sense of confidence about them and who they are. They can be higher than a kite or lower than a skunk. They have lots of friends. And they sometimes may believe that talking and doing are synonymous. In other words, I've talked about it, so therefore I've done it. Well, maybe not. They might need to focus a little bit more. I can tell you that's the case for sure. And they take pleasure in playing while they work. Anything that they're doing that they enjoy doing you, and, 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 and it's fun for them while they're doing it, and that's nothing could be better than that. Eye types are fun to watch. They're great starters, but they get quickly bored. That's why I said you've got to recognize if I'm going to work with an eye type and I know that they have this trait and I talk to them about on Monday about something that's due on Friday, I probably need to visit with them again on Tuesday to see how it's coming along. And then again on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. Otherwise, they won't think about it until Friday comes along and then they realize, oh, I'm out of time. They're very likable. They're prone to exaggerate sometimes. You know, it's like I've told my children a million times to stop exaggerating. Hope you caught that. They're easily excitable. They just, they have, they're the spark plug. They're the enthusiasm that comes to any particular project. And by the way, nothing great was ever accomplished without some enthusiasm and excitement. Have you ever looked at billboards? Have you ever looked at advertisements in newspapers, magazines, TV? They're always focused on people having fun and being excited because there's no business like show business. They like to sell. They like an attitude and an environment where there's enthusiasm, fun, and excitement. They don't like being ignored. They don't like being ridiculed or looking bad. They don't like being isolated or doing repetitive tasks, and they really don't like restraints. It feels like they're in a straitjacket. They're more free-spirited. Now, they don't do great in school. Oh, they do well in club sports, extracurricular activities. But when it comes to history, English, math, and science, or other academic disciplines, sometimes they have a harder time because of their ability to stay focused. I jokingly say this is the group that has this personality style has the attention span of a gnat, and I deal with that. But I wish I could go back in my life and do this over because I'd say to myself, come on, stay focused a little longer, get the job done, you can do it. Eyes want you to be fun. They want you to be responsive. They they want you to be stimulating and positive, upbeat and enthusiastic. As long as you're looking for the good, the pure, and the positive, and saying fun things and lifting people up, you will be doing well. Now, if you have this style, learn that you've got to focus a little better on, here's your motto. When I say focus a little more, here's your motto. Inch by inch, everything's a cinch, but by the yard, everything's hard. You've got to learn to little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit. Don't wait till the last minute. Don't put things off. Because then you have to scramble and and do everything you can to get to the end of the project. Whereas if you'll do a little bit every day, then you'll be the one to be glad that you did. And the people who are working with you will give you the recognition and the praise that you will so richly deserve from getting things done and completed. There will be, you'll meet I-types in your team, your organization, your family, your business, your school, wherever you are, you'll find these types. They tend to do better when there's a little more of a free-spirited sort of in sales, sort of in working with people, uh, rather than having a lot of structure. Structure is more challenging for them, but they need it. And remember, the only words you remember from this whole training is they are inspiring. They love to interact with people. They want everyone to have a great time. Now, we have finished two of the four different personality styles. That doesn't mean these are better than others. We're just doing this in D, I, S, and C order. We talked about last time the dominant type and how they're strong-willed and powerful. This is the inspiring type. They're fun. They're interesting. They're enthusiastic. They're positive. This is the one that usually entertains us. Have you ever noticed that almost all of life, as a matter of fact, the biggest business in life is entertainment. That's why we think about 
Disney World or Disneyland or Six Flags or Wet n Wild or Universal Studios and 101 other places that people go where they can go bowling or skating or water skiing or snow skiing. Why? Because all those in a word are fun. People work 50 weeks out of the year to take two weeks off to just relax and have fun. Anything that they think is fun. Isn't that amazing? Why not bring a little bit of fun into every day of your life? I realize different personalities have fun in different manners. Some like to read for fun. Some like to travel. Some like to be alone. That's okay. As long as you recognize this is the part of your life that makes your heart healthy. A merry heart, a happy heart will make you live longer and it'll make you feel good like you had a good dose of some good medicine to help you be stronger in life. I'm Dr. Robert Rome. This particular personality style is one that I'm very familiar with. If you have it, you got to learn to work with it. If you don't have it, you have to learn to develop it so you'll be able to connect with other people and have a great life together. I look forward to continuing on this journey of learning about the four different personality styles as we train together. I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you so much. For more information about this podcast, please visit www.becomingwiserpodcast.com.